All right, hey guys, what's up? And welcome to the first ever episode of Eulogist Reviews, the podcast version. Uh, I was doing YouTube videos for a while, uh, but now onward and upward to podcasts, I guess. Um, So today I have plenty of music-related topics to get to, such as three great up-and-coming local bands to review, Uh, throwback music that I've been listening to recently, and a little segment I'm going to do every week called What's Going On in Genre. Uh, So without further ado, let's get to that intro. So let's start with these local bands that I've been listening to recently. First, I wanted to start with a band that I've been listening to a lot called Go For Gold. Uh, They are actually from Arkansas. I don't know where in Arkansas exactly, but I know they're from Arkansas. Um, Arkansas, if you will. And uh, I've actually reviewed them a couple times. I believe I reviewed one of their songs called Swear On Us. Uh, It's from an EP that they released called Invincible. And you know what? They released a new song recently called Smile More and asked me to take a look at it. And actually, this song sounds a lot like Movements and the story so far. As far as the the song structure goes and and the chords that they use throughout it, um, the vocals more so sound like, I believe it's Patrick, the vocalist, from Movements. Um, where he does a little bit of straining. And the chord structure and the song structure uh, and the leads sound more like a classic pop-punk song that the story so far would have written in their earlier work. Now, this is a bit different from their past releases because their past releases seem a little bit more punky, I guess I would say, a little bit more on the post-hardcore side almost, at least leaning towards the post-hardcore side, uh, where this new release, Smile More, sounds a lot more pop-punk-centered, a lot more revolving around the pop aspects. Uh, obviously, more of the that punkiness breaks through um, in the vocals, and especially in places like The Bridge, uh, where they give you more of this pounding, less poppy, more uh, post-hardcore rock kind of vibe. And when I'm saying it sounds like the story so far is when you hear parts in this song where the guitarist is doing this fast palm muting, and when you mix that with the drummer uh, constantly you know, pounding on the toms, and the floor tom specifically, uh, you you get that classic combination that they usually do in a lot of heavy, fast pop punk. So basically, to wrap up reviewing this band so you don't get bored, uh, elements that you know you'll really like about this band are that you know they have very catchy choruses and hooks. Uh, they just have catchy riffs in general you know it's all very distorted it's not a lot of delay or anything like that that they borrow from other people uh the vocals are very straightforward poppy kind of vocals uh strained a little bit very similar to movements like i had said so if i could give this new song smile more a rating i would definitely say an 8.5 out of 10 So also, if you are curious to know what this song is mainly about, 
Uh, here is Spencer, uh, I believe this is the vocalist, talking about the meaning behind Smile More. Uh, Smile More was written on true events and based off of those events. and um, It's about recognizing your self-destructive habits and understanding the consequences of those habits. Um, it's a battle between you know, understanding that you need to change and acknowledging that you do enjoy those things. But I feel like a lot of people fall victim to that, and I know I have. So that's what Smile More means to me. So moving right along, uh, because I still have two other bands to get to before I go on to the next segment, um, we have a band called Indian Giver. Now, this is a band from, I believe, Hamilton, New Jersey. Uh, and they just recently released a new full-length album. And I, when I say full-length, I mean there are a lot of great, driving, emo, post-hardcore, ambient, rock, all this stuff. All of these tracks mixed together on this full-length album. Uh, and it's called Detachment. Now, my favorite song, or my favorite two songs on this whole album, probably, believe it or not, are the first two tracks. Um, we start off with this song called Bad Advice, and then it moves on to their single called Play Dead. Um, and I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, oh, Travis, you didn't listen to the whole album. Uh, you know, you only listened to the first two tracks. Well, that's not true at all. I just happen to relate more to the first two tracks completely. Uh, it's not that I didn't like the other tracks at all. Um, these were just my favorite ones. Personal preference. Get off my back. What I liked about these two tracks is the fact that they are pretty much complete opposites. I mean, in the very first track, um, Bad Advice, it's more of this almost post-hardcore version of a Say Anything track. And granted, it would be one of the poppier Say Anything tracks, but that's kind of what this sounds like. And then you have a song like Play Dead that is way more driving and post-hardcore ambient uh, influence. Um, and I just think it's so cool that they started off with two songs that sound... You know, it has their core sound in the middle of it, but around it, you just have these, you know, pop kind of tones or ambient kind of tones. And what I also really appreciate about this band is the fact that they have a super unique vocalist. Um, that's kind of what I like to hear in new up and coming bands, uh, especially. I remember when I listened to bands like Macari. Uh, when when that band started out, um, and even to this day, but more so when they first started out, they had this super unique vocalist that had a super high pitched voice that I had never heard before in my life, and you know that just got me really into that band, and that kept me with that band to this day. Now. With these guys, I like their vocals so much because this guy is a mixture of Max Bemis from Say Anything and Jonathan Michael, who was the vocalist for the now defunct Self Against City. To wrap this up, basically, this band is extremely interesting to me. Uh, every track that I've listened to from them, I've been hooked on. Uh, and I usually can't say that a lot about local bands or unsigned bands. Um, I can get into an unsigned band, but I never really super hooked where I'm listening to their songs over and over again. And that's how I feel about Indian Giver in general. They write super catchy songs that are kind of, in a sense, experimental for the genre that they've placed themselves in. So, you know, the vocals are great. The tones are amazing. I like the ambience mixed with some pop and some post-hardcore. And as far as their new album, Detachment, 
I'm going to give this a full on 10 out of 10. So as far as the last band in the lineup goes, uh, they are a group from around the Orlando, Florida area called Pathos Pathos. These guys sent me a new single the other day called Whiplash um, that is due out sometime in April. And this is a great track to me. Um, It's pop rock meets indie meets ambient rock with a 50s surf vibe thrown in. And all of that just, you know, kind of mashed together to me is something super refreshing. Um, I mean, you do kind of hear that influence from bands like Rome Hero Foxes, who did that on their latest album, 18 Summers, where they kind of threw uh, this 50s surf five mixed with a little bit of punk and emo. And that's kind of what I would compare this to. I admit I never creeped until the seed of fever saves my bravery yeah. I swore to myself i stay clean So one of the members in the band, uh, Matthew Walsh, I asked him what the song was about and what it kind of meant to him. And he actually sent me the following. Whiplash is a song about being in a relationship with depression. I typically don't write songs about real events, but rather fictional characters. The song takes place from the point of view of both people in the relationship, depending on what part of the song you're listening to. The beginning of the songs deals with recognizing and coming to terms with the fact that they're in a relationship with someone struggling with depression. The chorus is sung from the point of view of the one in the relationship struggling with depression. They're crying out to death to make them feel something again. The song ultimately leads to this person taking their own life. This happens during the blast beat part. I wanted to keep it instrumental and emotional sounding during this part of the song slash relationship. The final part of the song is sung from the point of view of the remaining partner. Dealing with such a tragedy and being in denial about the whole thing. Kind of somber, I guess. I try to write songs that deal with every emotion. Dealing with depression and death is impossibly hard. If you or someone you know is dealing with depression, please let them know that you're there for them and that you love them. This was actually really interesting to read from him. Uh, because it's a strange juxtaposition between the tones of this song, which are very light and airy and poppy, mixed with the actual themes uh, relating to the the lyrics of this song. You know, you have the light and airiness from the, the tones of the guitars um, and the song structure in general. And then you have this song about death and dealing with death and dealing with depression and helping someone with that. Uh, So I think this is a very unique and interesting song. And please make sure to check it out when it comes out. This band's called Pathos Pathos. um, And the song's called Whiplash. And I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. So moving right along, I actually wanted to talk about a few albums that I had stumbled across again um, since the uh, mid to late 2000s. Uh, These are some throwbacks. You know, I'm not really going to review them every week. I just kind of wanted you to know that these things exist and that you should still be listening to them. As far as the first one that I've been listening to a lot again It has to be Happiness from Dance Gavin Dance from 2009, uh, which was the year that I graduated high school. So this album really holds a special place in my heart. Uh, If you remember, this is one of the albums, one of the two albums that had Kurt Travis on it. Um, And actually, John Mess was not a part of the band for this album. I have no clue what happened. There was some kind of beef. Um, So Will Swan stepped up and he actually played guitar and he screamed, which was 
fantastic. I wish he would do that more. Um, but yeah, this album was very trippy to me when I was 18, um, you know, and it had the perfect amount of screaming, the perfect amount of noodly guitars and ambience mixed with post-hardcore. So this is a great album. Check it out again. Uh, check it out for the first time if you haven't. Um, and get on that Dance Gavin Dance train. The second album that I've been listening to recently that's a big throwback, big, big throwback, um, would have to be What to Do When You Are Dead by Armor for Sleep. Yeah, so this one is super duper emo. Uh, this was Cut My Wrist and Black My Eyes, emo era. You know, Armor for Sleep wore the the white studded belts and they spiked their hair in the back and they had the emo swoosh and they were perfect. Um, you know, the album as a whole isn't perfect. Um, you know, they, they had their moments on it, you know, um, the truth about heaven, you know, remember to feel real bangers like that. Um, yeah, so th this is a, a great emo album to uh, get you back into your scene days. Um, break out your sister's or your wife's, I'm not judging, or your wife's skinny jeans, whatever. The last album that I've been listening to a lot recently is The Earth Sings Me Fa Me by The Receiving End of Sirens, or as people affectionately call them, Trios. Now, this band, you know, honestly, one of the most underrated bands in the history, I said it, in the history of ambient rock groups. You know, uh, they were on Triple Crown Records for their first two releases, I believe. Um, if not, at least this release was on Triple Crown. And these guys were the definition of perfection when it came to blending three guitar leads perfectly over beats and glitches and having almost everyone in the band singing. I mean, nowadays when you listen to a band with three guitars, it's like, okay, two guys are playing the rhythm, one guy is singing or playing a lead, and they can't blend that or pull that off well enough. Uh, these guys mixed all of those things. You know, you had two people playing leads. You had one person play, playing rhythm. Uh, the bassist was singing. The drummer was singing. You had group vocals. You just had all of this great stuff going on at the same time. And then you just had a, a, a swirling of ambience taking over your brain. Now it's time for a segment that I want to try to do every week called What's Going On in Genre. And by that, I mean I'm going to take a look at bands that are kind of killing it right now uh, in their respective genre. So the first one I'm going to do is What's Going On in Screamo? What's going on in current now Screamo, right? Because when you think of Screamo, uh, you think of Bless the Fall and Old Bring Me the Horizon and Silverstein and Under Oath. But, you know, that was seen Screamo. Uh, that wasn't even the origins of Screamo as that kind of erupted out of the, um, I believe, 80s and 90s hardcore scene, punk and hardcore scene. Um but nowadays we kind of have a revival of Screamo almost. Not seen Screamo, but that Screamo that was happening in the 80s and 90s and even before 2005. We have bands like Birds in Row. <laughs> who are from Laval, France. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, but they list themselves as blues mixed with hardcore. And we all know that blues mixed with hardcore is just, you know, screamo. Um, their latest record is called We Already Lost the World. So make sure to check them out. 
Next, we have a band called Joshua Creek. And they're from around me in southwest Florida. Uh, These guys are more so screamo mixed with some post-hardcore thrown in there because they do have some well-sung vocals. Um, And their newest album is called Blur. Third up, we have a band called The Title Sleep. Who I believe are from Germany. I don't know. They, they listed a lot of places that they're from. I think they're from Germany. Uh, regardless, their newest EP is called Be Kind that they released last year in 2018. Uh, and these guys kind of mix Screamo with some metalcore elements. So you can see that Screamo has kind of evolved from this loud and boisterous rock scene to something that combines Screamo with other modern genres. Another band to check out is called State Faults. They're from Santa Rosa, California, and these guys actually mix Screamo with punk, right? Kind of fast driving punk mixed with these high pitched and even some low pitched screams. Two albums to check out from them are Head in the Clouds and Resonate Desperate. Next up is Jillian Carter. I'm not actually sure if it's Jillian Carter or Gillian Carter, uh, but I do know they're from Palm Bay, Florida, and I would actually call this band Post Screamo, uh, mainly because they throw in a lot of post-rock elements that make them sound super ambient while still having that core Screamo sound. A single to check out from them is called Zero and One, which was released this year in 2019. And last but not least, we have a band called Ostraka. They are from the quote-unquote screamo capital of the world, Richmond, Virginia. And these guys are really interesting because they have that lo-fi sound that you used to hear in pure, quote-unquote, pure screamo bands from back in 2003-2004. And they also mix in some elements of thrash. So that's going to be it for episode one of Eulogist Reviews podcast. Um, Please make sure that you've hit the subscribe button on YouTube or SoundCloud or the iTunes podcast so you don't miss an episode of me kind of rambling on about my favorite bands. (laughs) 